Hello there. Um, uh, it's really great to be here. Um, I can't believe I'm speaking at OSCON. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and I'd really like to tell you about what we got going on with uh, Kubernetes at Zulily, if I can figure out where my clicker is. All right, but first I'll tell you a little bit about what we do at Zulily. Uh, we're an e-commerce site. We um, um, kind of a flash sales uh, site where you launch uh, over 9,000 products a day. Um, um, we featured over 15,000 brands kind of in the life of the company. We have about 5 million uh, active customers. Um, but what I'm going to tell you more about is uh, one specific team at, uh, at Zulily and our journey to kind of containerizing what we were deploying uh, and how Kubernetes helped that. Um, so, you know, the Docker hype was building, kind of reached a, enough of a level at Zulily around 2013 um, where we thought hey, maybe this would be a really good thing to do. Uh, this would be fun to play with. So, but it wasn't really until, um, you know, a year later where we actually started to try to experiment with containers in production. And, um, you know, the... Um, so, and when we did that, we, we really, you know, honestly, we struggled. We, the first things we tried to deploy were kind of just off-the-shelf third-party images, things like Redis and Nginx and things like that. Um, and for us, um, it didn't really seem worthwhile. We weren't getting enough out of it that we were putting in. There was a steep learning curve. Um, there was a lot of additional complexity. Um, and for us, given the scale that we were deploying at, our servers had specific roles. Um, and it didn't really seem like a, a good fit. We weren't getting, you know, we're not gaining, you know, massive resource utilization by deploying with containers. Uh, and we had a lot of the same complexities. We still had to pick uh, out of a specific port range for services um, when we were, you know, deploying a container somewhere. And um, we found that it was, you know, not necessarily um, a better way of doing things. It was just very different. So kind of operationally for us, it was a challenge. Um, so a lot of the, you know, the promise of containers for us didn't really pay off because of the operational overhead. So um, that's when we kind of ran into Kubernetes, um, and it seemed to kind of provide a, a big answer for this. Um, the, um, but I think one kind of barrier to entry here, uh, for us anyway, was we knew that uh, for, for us to start moving into Kubernetes, we really had to fully invest in dockerizing uh, everything. Everything had to run as a container. And <clears throat> just a quick tangent, I think, um, you know, something that I think is a common misconception about uh, containers or Docker or and, and these microservices or what it kind of takes to build a dockerized application, you don't have to have um, microservices. You don't have to have a service-oriented architecture. Um, you know, the, the, to, to us, the, the task of dockerizing something, really, if you have a process that executes, it maybe it exposes a port, um, maybe it needs external configuration files, you can dockerize that easily. The hardest part, really, is in operating the container, um, especially in a production environment. Um, so that's what we look to Kubernetes to, to provide, and services are a big part of that. I think you're going to hear a lot of people talking about how the service abstraction Kubernetes provides, um, IP per pod, that kind of stuff is um, just really freeing for us. Um, the container registry that Google provides uh, gave us a way to host all of our images, so um, that kind of solved that additional problem as well. Um, and then once we had Kubernetes running, we kind of had this command line interface for our cluster. Um, and then given, I think, enough time where we actually had started to move stuff into Kubernetes, we really became, like, we grew to, to really love it and rely on it. Um, one of the favorite, one of our favorite things about it is um, in Kubernetes, your, uh, the pods you deploy, the replication controllers, services, everything um, is specified with a declarative configuration syntax. Um, which is just really a fancy way of saying you, you have a static file that describes your desired end state for your cluster. Um, and so what we can do with that is we, just, we can commit that. We can push that into a central uh, configuration repository. And now we have a complete history of every single version of our uh, production environment. Um, but speaking of environments, 
Um, another nice thing about Kubernetes is you can kind of deploy into your infrastructure without side effects. And what I mean by that is um, because you configure your services and, and based on label queries for what pods are members of that service, um, you can very easily deploy the same pod but without the label. Or maybe you can give it a test label instead of production or something. So you can, you can put development code into your, into your cluster. You can put test code. Um, you can do staging. You can do a lot of really interesting rollouts um, without kind of buying into one approach. You don't have to invest in alternative infrastructure to do that. So where we're at today is that the concept of production for us isn't a set of servers. It's a set of labels. Um, some pods and services might have those labels today, and then maybe they, they get removed from the cluster. Maybe our test versions or canary versions of these things get those labels uh, tomorrow. Um, so with that, these kind of conceptual environments you have in your cluster are free. Um, and then we knew we were, we were really like drinking the Kool-Aid when like, we literally asked the question, like, what, what's the actual name of the server? I couldn't figure out how to get to it. Um, that was a nice benefit. So the kind of the summary, I guess, uh, for us, um, and this has been true for months, um, at least in our use case, um, is that Kubernetes is definitely production ready. Um, and even for a deployment like ours at Zulily, where you know, we're not talking about hundreds of nodes, um, we're not yet using the cluster, although we're starting to, um, to host applications from separate teams. Um, but we can very easily now. Um, and just to give you an idea of kind of the numbers we're talking about, like what do I think is, is modest? We're talking about dozens of nodes, um, 36 distinct images running in production, um, 285 pods, 23 services. Um, this is from a single team uh, inside of Zulily um, using Kubernetes. Um, and the other nice metric I like is uh, not only that I can say that we've made over 800 production, con production environment config changes, um, but uh, I can actually get that number for you. All I gotta do is uh, do a git log. Um, that's all I have. So uh, next up we got uh, Tyler Davis from Porch.